uh, to start with this webinar, we have a, a small but dedicated, dedicated crowd uh, attending this, uh, this webinar on uh, wave and wind. My name is Mikkel Hansen. I'm the CEO of, of Apprendio and also co-founder. Uh, Apprendio works with learning with a focus on the green transition and on, on the maritime. Our agenda today is that uh, uh, we will start with a brief introduction to the Energy and Climate Academy by, by Tom Kierkegaard, and then Julia will uh, take us through the, the overview of the wave and wind course and basically how to harvest wind from, uh, from these, uh, these energy sources. And then I'll take you to a, a short tour of the, the shop where you can purchase the course afterwards and also our learning platform. And we'll wrap up with a small Q&A session and also get information about the discount code. And just then as a short personal introduction to the, to the theme, I have a maritime background. As a deck officer, I've been sailing on tank and container carriers. So I have experienced both uh, more or less my body, waves and wind. And we can all imagine, especially in waves, all the energy we have, there is in the waves. Um, but, but maybe not, not to the extent and how much energy there is uh, in, in waves. My personal experience as a layman in, in, in that sense, um, I've been sailing and several times, uh, one, I've been recalling off the, actually the coast of, of Chile. We've been lying with uh, large container ships and the, the ship had been thrown from, from side to side in the basic calm weather, but with a very, very heavy Pacific swell just indicating how, how much force and energy there is in the waves. And the same, I also have a remembrance of uh, crossing the Bay of Biscay in the uh, uh, storm. We know, at, at least in, in Denmark in 1999, that uh, let Denmark bear, uh, and experiencing these uh, huge gigantic force that, uh, uh, that these elements put on our ship. So enough about that, enough about the experiences I would suggest that we get started with this webinar on uh, harvesting the energy from wave and wind sources. And I'll give you the spotlight, Tom. Thank you very much. I'll share my screen. Yeah, my name is Torben Kierkegaard. Uh, I've been working with postgraduate education since 1981. So it's quite some years now. Uh, I've been working in different areas at universities and university colleges. Uh, I've been working in private companies. But in um, 2013, I started Energy and Climate Academy where I was, uh, the aim for that is to support the green transition in transferring knowledge from people who have some both knowledge and experience to people who would like to, to know more about uh, the green transition. So we have uh, postgraduate short courses in, uh, in the area we have here in the way when wind, we have about offshore wind, we have about district uh, heating, district energy. We have about uh, uh, combined uh, energy systems. Um, and we are right now developing something about smart cities and, and other areas. All our content is uh, curated, which means we stand for the quality of it. There is no advertising. Um, we have two kind of courses. We have in-person courses held in Copenhagen most often, and then we have online and self-paced courses. And the one we are going to talk about today is an online and self-paid course. The lecturers we use, they are not employed by us uh, solely. They typically are working at uh, universities or are in industry specialists. Um, and have many years of, uh, <clears throat> of both uh, international experience and they have a lot of knowledge. Uh, we have been a partner with Apprendio. This is the learning platform for us since uh, last year. 
and uh, so they are taking care, as Mikkel uh, told you, about the learning platform. And now my screen is up. Now it's coming. So this this is the business model. You can say we have contacts to knowledgeable people, specialists from both private and public companies, from universities, uh, and together with them we put uh, uh, we we develop the the courses. All our courses are short professional courses, which means they are from eight hours to about five days. That is the maximum. So we take care of combining the, the issues uh, and we take care at Energy and Climate Academy about the, the marketing, the sales of the courses, but uh, we are working very closely together with the, the private areas as Julia. And then we are selling the, the, the courses to both public companies, private companies, states and, and regions. So I'll, I'll just put some logos up here where you can see who we have been working with, who have been participating in our courses. We have participants from China, mostly from Europe, but also from the USA. So we have uh, up to now have uh, people from 17 different countries uh, participating. It's private companies like Danfoss and Ørsted and Grundfos, but it's also public uh, areas, public bodies as the Energy and Climate Ministry here in Denmark. We have Department of Energy and Environment in the USA. Uh, so it's a very mixed uh, crowd of people who are attending our courses. Uh, we have been doing this the last 10 years, as I told you. But we are now focusing more and more at uh, on on our, our online courses. The COVID has has really changed the picture of, uh, of of training and education. So we will be focusing on that in the future. Okay, I think that was all from me right now, Nigel. All right, thank you so much, Torben, and thanks for the introduction about the Energy and Climate Academy. I'll now leave the floor to you, Julia, to unfold some of the uh, the issues and topics around, especially wave energy, but also wind energy in the course. I'll give the spotlight to you. Yeah, uh, thank you. Can you see my screen? Yeah. With the presentation? Yes. And it's yes. Okay, excellent. So thank you very much. And uh, hello, everyone. My name is Julia fernandez Chozas, and I'm a power systems engineer. I've been working with uh, renewable energy sources, mostly wave and wind, for 15 years. Um, and I have my PhD on the combination of wind and wave, and I've run in my consultancy since uh, 10 years ago. And today I will try to, in quite a short time, I will try to present why we decided to come up with this course, what's the interesting things about it, and who's the faculty, who are the teachers that you will meet during the course, and what's the content. And very short, and uh, I think we, we could have time afterwards to some questions from you, so please, uh, you're welcome to write them down or to, or to prepare them. So why, 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 why this course? Well, as we all know, the demand for renewable energy generation is immense, and there's a need to use as many resources as we have around us. This includes wave, wind, um, biomass, the power of geothermal, et cetera, et cetera. And unfortunately, uh, there is always the need to have a balance. Well, not unfortunately, that's the reality between electricity in the electricity sector between, between production and demand. And that the, commission, that the commissioning of conventional power plants do not only requires renewable energy systems, to provide energy in great quantity, but also with great reliability. And to achieve that, complementarity, complementarity among renewable energy sources is essential to provide an stable grid supply. Why is that? Well, substitution of conventional power plant doesn't happen in a one-to-one -one relationship because we need additional reserve capacity. And in this scenario, unlocking wave energy 
as an additional source of energy helps to diversify the supply of sustainable energy together with the other resources we have around us. And specifically in this course, we will see how wave energy offers complementarity to wind and solar. Let's focus on how wave energy complements wind power. We have a very simple graph. Uh, in this axis, we have uh, 10 days of measured data of wave, of significant wave height, which is the, the parameter that defines wave energy and uh, wind speed. So waves are represented in blue, winds are represented in, 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 in red. And I think we can see immediately maybe one, two or three things. The first one that you can probably see is that the red line varies much more than the blue line. So it's much more variable. The other thing you can see probably is that one drops and increases the red line much more than the blue line, which is much more smooth. Then we can also see that the red line decreases to zero. And at this time below three meters per second, a wind turbine would stop producing. Whereas the blue line is above 0 0.5 meter waves, which indicates that wave energy converters, if they, if they were combined in the same location, they would keep producing. That means that when wind turbines shut, shut down, wave energy converters could act as a backup capacity. And another interesting aspect is that when, for example, here, when we see the red line decreasing, we can see that the same happens, but with some delay because waves are created by winds and therefore there is usually a delay, depends if it is two hours up to 10 hours, depends on where we are. But there is a delay between wind, waves and the winds that have created them. And that means that whatever we see in wind, wind turbines, that would happen in wave energy converters after a while, which is a very good, they are correlated, but with a delay, which is very good. So in that way, we can summarize that wave energy offers complementary electricity production to wind power. And our proposal that you will see along the course is why not to utilize, to maximize utilization of the sea space by increasing the use of the area, maybe by including wave energy converters within the wind turbines, for example, or together close to each other or on the same structure as we will see throughout the course. We also know that waves are more predictable than winds, and this is part of the course. We've studied thoroughly what is the predictability of waves compared to that of winds, and why, why is it relevant to predict? Well, we know that the electricity is traded in the day ahead electricity markets. The North Pool is the market of the Nordic countries. And the day ahead, the day before the, the operation of the, of the market, all the electricity is, trade, is traded. And therefore, everyone who has a production plant can be a wind energy farm, can be a coal fire plant, could be a gas turbine, needs to put the, their bids into the market. And then there would be a match between electricity and demand. But all of the unbalanced electricity that a producer has promised to the market, whether it's up or down, that has that is penalized and that has to be compensated by the other type of energy sources, which are more expensive. So the more predictable an energy system is, the cheaper it becomes. So that's why predictability is also a key factor. And this is also part of the course where we will see what is the predictability of waves and winds and what is the predictability of the power production of wave energy converters and wind turbines and the comparison of the two. We will also analyze what are the savings if a percentage of the for example, of the Danish energy system would be covered by wave energy, and what are the reductions in balancing costs in that uh, in that scenario? Um, just to finish up with the summary of wave energy, uh, as as uh, it has been branded, uh, it's known the ideal partner for wind and solar. Um, it's predictable. It produces at different times than wind and solar, and enables better balancing. Some other characteristics about wave energy is that it's a huge resource. It could cover 10% of the, of the electricity demand worldwide. Uh, we know it's constant, more or less in time, whenever we go to the sea, depending where we are, but Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean, uh, Oceanic Ocean, we always have waves, these nice swells, which are ideal for producing electricity. Um, it's close to the consumption points as 50% of our population is located close to the sea areas. 
and it complements the other renewable energy sources we have today. So what we advocate for is not a energy system uh, only based on wave energy, but where we use the resources that have around us. And for example, um, some of the questions we get sometimes, why if we are so far, so, so developed with wind energy, why do we need wave energy? And again, it's to picture the complementarity and the diversity and adaptation and that a diversified energy system finally is, uh, is, is, is what we need for our future energy systems. So the content of this course is first to, we will try to explain the resource, how are waves created, uh, what are the parameters that define a wave, what are the technologies that are used to harness the, this resource, wave energy, and then we address the combination of offshore wind and wave, why is it interesting and the advantages, both in economic terms and in technical terms. That's covered by myself. And then it's uh, Peter Chagron who follows on the, more on the legal aspects of certification and regulation. Um, a, very interesting, a very interesting and relevant topic on the testing of the, of the technologies and he also promotes, um, he also uh, discusses about a, um, a, a, a learning on the side. Hans Christian Sorensen follows uh, where he addresses the role of multi-use platform. Multi-use platforms are also aligned to the feeling that we need to make use of the sea as much as possible. And for example, we have a case study of the Middelbunden wind farm, which is just in front of Copenhagen, the capital of Denmark. Middelbunden wind farm is a beautiful 20 turbines uh, in a curved line. That's the layout built in the year 2000. And where nowadays uh, we combine the activities of uh, wind harnessing. So we produce electricity with the wind turbines and we combine it with tourism. We visit, we welcome tourists, both from industry experts or professionals or um, students from all over the world, actually. Now in the spring and summertime, it's maybe two tours per week, three tours sometimes. And it's an, another way of, uh, of, of utilizing renewable energy. He also addresses the use of the production of seaweed with, uh, with wave power, with the wave, with the wave dragon energy converter. And then lecture five and six are on a technology we thought it was very interesting for the user uh, to, to learn about a technology from the very, very beginning, from the development, from the start, when you have an idea and a scratch, and then you need to develop it get, in order to get commercialized. So in both lecture five and six, there are two technology of focuses. Sarah focuses on the floating power plant which is a combined platform hosting a wind turbine and a wave and wave energy converters. That has some advantages because the platform is very stable. That's good for the wind turbine and for accessing the wave energy converters when they need maintenance. And it, 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 uh, she addresses, she, she describes all the way uh, from, the, from the conception to the current plans and power to X, um, uh, power to X projects, etc. And Wave Dragon, that's addressed by Eric Fries Metzen and Hans Christian Sorensen. And the Wave Dragon is the same. They will describe all along the development road, including the 20,000 20, hours of testing of sea trials that they had on the west part of Denmark and Nesum Planning. So, um, this is uh, wave energy currently presents uh, some difficulties. Uh, there's some challenges behind that they must be solved. And what the, here we are delighted to, to explain you this uh, with my colleagues around Europe, uh, given their huge expertise, technical capabilities and achievements that have done. Everyone is uh, very much experienced in their sector. All of us are working in the industry for I think many uh, more than 15 years, up to 40 or 50 years experience. So it's uh, I'm, I'm very proud of having this uh, this team around us. So myself, just to be, yeah, I, I be a brief description. I have my own consultancy where I work together with wave energy technologies to help them throughout their development road, 
I'm doing economic modeling and uh, operation and maintenance strategies. I also do, give some lectures, training of renewables and organized tours to middle abundant wind farm. I'm involved in some R&D projects funded by the European Commission, the ones I've listed there, Valid, Livewek and United, and the Europe Wave project. And I'm also working with multi-use and hybrid systems. Uh, Peter Sharon, he's um, a very powerful and uh, energetic uh, person. He's very much experienced in managing to put technologies, wave, tidal, solar PV floating into the water. Hans Kirsten Sorensen, he's a civil engineer by background. He's been involved in the development of the two first or the first uh, offshore wind development in Denmark, the Mirabunde Wind Farm and Lineten, which are based on a cooperative approach. Uh, I think some, there's some background noise, sorry for that. Um, and he's addressing this uh, Mirabunde with wind and tourism and the seaweed production. Sarah Thomas, she's an excellent engineer doing a lot of hydrodynamics in her PhD, and now she's the CTO of Floating Power Plant, which is the technology of focusing lecture five. Um, this is a, a, a render of it where you can see the wind turbine and then a boat accessing on the back. It's very good for the access. And uh, sitting on a floating structure with wave energy converters included inside, as well as power to X units. Uh, the, the topic she addresses is uh, an overall overview of the company, of the technology, how and how they have de-risked the technology along the development road. They focus uh, now on the Gran Canaria project, which is driving them to the large grid connection, connected market and the power to x market, where they are also working now. And the last lecture is given by Alfred Madsen, a Wave Dragon founder, co-founder and, um, and director, and where they also suggest Wave Dragon is a technology of the wave of the overtopping type. Waves would go over ramp, this ramp, they will get accumulated into the reservoir, and then the waters would be used to turbine the water from the reservoir to the sea level. And the platform is able to accommodate two wind turbines, one on each side, making the most out of it. One of the advantages of this course is that every lecture is split into videos not more than 10, 15 minutes, which makes it more, or which makes it easy to go in and out the videos um, depending on your available time. So a lecture, if it is one hour long, it would be split into small videos. So you can just maybe make it in short breaks or so on. Yeah, I think that was uh, me. Um, maybe we could have some questions on the content afterwards. Now I leave the floor to Michael, so he follows with the appendix. Yes. Thank the you so much, platform. Julia. Super, super interesting. Yeah. Um, so if those of you participating have a have a question or two, just uh, note them down. And first, we'll just go directly into uh, to the platform here, and you should be able to to see to see that. Yes, yes, yes. that's perfect. And we'll just run through there. So. <clears throat> It is, it is running there. So first of all, we enter the shop. It's on uh, shop.apprendio.io. And here, if you go to training providers, you'll be able to find the courses from the Energy and Climate Academy. And here you can see the other courses that Tom has been mentioning. So basically go into the WAVE course. And there you'll be able to, to read more details about the course. Uh, you will also be able to um, uh, to buy modules of the course, but here you will buy a module of the full course. If you are representing an EU company, you are of course uh, eligible for paying without VAT, but it requires that you enter your EU VAT ID. So go to the, the checkout and then you basically follow a, a normal checkout and, and purchasing procedure in order to, to get the course. 
Um, yes, I'm, I'm not typing as speaking, it's, uh, it's been pre recorded. Um, so just. Yeah, and moving one step ahead, uh, you'll be able to table, pay with different. Payment options, credit cards, uh, PayPal, by invoice, etc. And you will also be issued uh, following this webinar with a discount code where you can put in the code on the section on the upper right hand side. When you have purchased, you will get access credential and you'll be uh, giving access to the uh, learning platform. And it will just show you here how to access that platform. And you can share, see in the chat, the uh, discount code has also been shared. So here you'll be reading about the contents of the course and then you'll be able to dig in to the various modules that uh, Julia has uh, exp uh, explained about. And you can see here they are uh, divided into specific segments of the course, so you are able to quickly go in and out. I have five, 15 minutes now, so I'll go one step further and uh, learn about this specific topic. Um, we also provide a, a mobile app option where you download the Apprentice app and then you have the exact same contents available, especially if you're on the move uh, or if you go on a plane ride, you can download the contents to your mobile device and then enjoy it while you're while you're traveling to make it convenient for the uh, course participants. Yes. So I think we are we're back again. Um, yeah, perhaps the, uh, I, I could could mention yeah. one thing that uh, that the the course is taught in English. Uh, the material is in English, but uh, but we can also put subtitles on the uh, on the videos. So if you, for example, want the uh subtitles in spanish or french uh, then then we can do that so it's also good for people that are not that experienced into the english language uh, so they also can get a lot out of the course exactly and um if there's somebody writing a question then please go ahead but in the meantime uh, i have one question for you julia yeah uh, because uh, I mean, we've been following uh, the, the renewable ener energy uh, industries and 30 years ago we had the Vinnebu wind farm and so on. And we also know that been a, there's been a lot of experience with wave production. But can you just tell me a little, also a little bit about what's, uh, why, why hasn't it really been taking off? Why, why hasn't it had the same traction uh, than wind? Uh, what are, is there some main specific technical uh, challenges or what's yeah. the approach to be cracked? I think that you've mentioned the technical challenges and I think it's part of it uh, because if we think about wind turbines, we have been, we have had windmills uh, centuries ahead and they've always been used. Okay. So we knew how to harness the power of wind. And then with what we have done since the seventies has been to put wind turbines and getting from 25 kilowatts, very little, very sweet wind turbines to the very big ones. And that has been done onshore. So that's something that you that that technical development, which has been uh, extremely good, has been done onshore. Yeah. Where yes, and then we put those wind turbines to an offshore substructure on the sea. Whereas in wave energy, if we think about our history, when there, whenever there is a storm, all vessels go back to harbor. Very little people live on the close to the sea areas, very very nearby. You we live a bit further out, a bit in shadow of the sea, because we know that when a storm is coming, it's something you don't want to face. And whenever we place wave energy technologies into the water, they have to operate in normal conditions, but they also have to survive to those uh, storm conditions. And that's part of the challenge uh, of yeah. wave energy that we can only, and unfortunately only test in real seas. Yeah. So the testing, it's uh, tedious, it's expensive, and it's um, something that offshore wind 
has not done in the same way because they just no. shut out okay. the blades. No. So it's a different approach. Moorings are a challenge. So actually, whenever if someone is willing to get into a, an exciting wave into an exciting renewable energy sector, wave energy is uh, one of those with a lot of still some questions to answer. Interesting, but but also looking at the potential you mentioned the uh, the potential of covering ten percent ish. Uh, of the energy source, it's uh, definitely also uh, uh, will be a, a major player in, the, in that uh, gigantic puzzle of yeah. energy sources. All right. Is there anything uh, else uh, on wrapping up? Uh, there's no questions in the chat. Anything re concluding remarks for more Julia? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, it's fine. I think I've um, uh, not much right. to say anymore, so. <laughs> That's fine. All right. So uh, we, uh, we recommend people to, to dig into the course and uh, get into this, uh, this very interesting and potential technology with both wind and wave. And uh, we'd like to appreciate you, uh, you being here and uh, joining the, the webinar, both you as presenters and also the participants. Thank you so much for today. Yeah, thank you everyone.